Hey guys, Alex J here for Music Mastermind. So, you're tired of Pro Tools crashing left and right, and every time you work with plugins, the more you add, the more it feels weird, especially if you're doing recording. I'm gonna give you some great tips on tuning your machine for performance with Pro Tools. That being said, most of these tips will help your computer's performance with any DAW. Here's a little checklist I made for you every time you want to optimize your computer. We'll look mostly at the Mac optimization since it's what we use, but there's also some great Windows optimization practices in the checklist. Here's a really handy guide in regards to the optimization of your system, starting with the system preferences and moving on to Pro Tools. Here's some of the main points. We need to check out optimization suggestions from the software developers, perform disk optimizations, perform system tune-ups as far as our operating system goes, and perform Pro Tools tune-ups. Let's start with basic optimizations. The first thing to check out is Avid's website since they have great guides to optimizing your computer based on the type you have, Windows or PC, and the version of Pro Tools you own. I'll leave the link below in the description. Another great resource is the optimization guides from Sweetwater.com. I'll also leave that link in the description below. Let's now look at disk optimizations. Start by running an analysis in your hard drive using the Disk Utility app and repair any permissions on your drive if needed. If you're formatting a new drive for your recording system, make sure you use the Mac OS X journaled option for your drive. This uses the HFS Plus encoding system, which is common for Macs, but it has extra mechanisms that avoid corruption of the file system in case of unplanned mishaps, such as a loss of power during a writing operation, among others. Mind, this won't work well on Windows computers. If you're confused about formatting and which system is better to use for what drive, check out our Drive Formatting and Uses video on our channel or at musicmastermind.tv. Warning. Do not format an existing drive without properly backing it up and making sure it's the right thing to do. As far as system prefs, let's do the following. Go to the bottom navigation menu, click on System Preferences, and now the first thing we're going to look at is the Energy Saver settings. Click in there. Once you're inside, uh, make sure that the power adapter and battery options are set to never uh, in regards to the computer and the display sleep. Also, make sure there's nothing checked in regards to putting hard disk to sleep or uh, trying to save battery life uh, by dimming the display or any of that stuff. Um, this uh, really takes a toll on the system, especially on like a laptop or smaller systems or not like a desktop. Another tweak we can look at is um, disabling the Firewire networking, uh, which applies mostly uh, to all of you who have Firewire devices. To change it, click on Network. Then look at the list on the left of all the network connections you have. Click on the Firewire connection, and then where it says Configure IP version 4, switch that to Off. Then hit Apply, and uh, yeah, that's how you do it. You might have to restart the computer for the changes to be effective. Another great tweak to do is going into Security and Privacy, and then clicking on File Vault and making sure that it's off. The system is great, but it's not too good with... Um, reading and writing for Pro Tools. So you want to turn that off. Um, another important tweak that's sometimes overlooked is keeping your iLock key with the latest drivers. To do that, go to iLock.com, then select the operating system you're using and download the license manager. Um, the software is really good. You can uh, not only manage all your keys, whether they're online or offline, and then all the licenses inside of it, whether they're active or inactive. Uh, really great tool for um, managing anything that has to do with your keys and authorizations. Um, make sure you always get the latest version for your operating system and uh, keep your keys with the freshest drivers. Um, now let's go back to the system prefs and we're going to turn off any automatic software updates. Uh, there's different ways to do this in this system. Uh, you can click on the App Store and then uncheck the box that says automatically check for updates option. Uh, the biggest thing to consider here is that anytime you want to do an update, you'll have to do it manually, and you can do so by clicking on the Show Updates button there on that App Store tab, and uh, that will prompt you to the suggestions. Going manual with the updates is the best way to go, especially when it comes to the operating system updates. A uh, small update can really turn things into a complete nightmare, especially with Pro Tools. So, yeah.
Another big thing we can do to speed up the workflow is uh, tweaking the settings for Spotlight. I wouldn't recommend disabling it. Uh, that would be a really heavy process, but you can always add filters to your drives, files, and folders so that the computer doesn't index the contents in it. So to activate the filter, just pretty much drag any disk, file, or folder into that Spotlight window, and that will effectively uh, apply the privacy filter. So you're going to have to be super organized with your files because when you turn this off, there's going to be no indexing using the search bar, which is super annoying, but believe me, it's so worth it. The last thing we can look at as far as system preferences optimizations, which is small but really important as well, is the startup items. You know, it happens often that there's softwares running in the back that you don't even know about. Uh, to check that out, you can go to the system preferences again and go to users and groups and then select your main user and then click on login items. So this is going to show you a list of what software items start when you first start the computer. Um, it's always a good practice to not have anything here uh, except for stuff like Dropbox if you're collaborating with people and uh, anything that's relevant to your uh, Pro Tools rig. Now, in regards to Pro Tools, let's look at the following details. Change the backup structure to a 30 backup storage structure made every one minute. This is enough to go back to critical decision points that are not too far back in time. It's also not too many backups that will have Pro Tools working extra hard just to maintain backups. I'm personally comfortable doing backups every five minutes and only keeping 10 backups at a time. But again, that's just me. Now, let's tweak the playback engine. If you're doing dense mixing with lots of plugins, go for high samples. If you're doing recording, aim for lower samples. If you're using virtual instruments or tracking live with plugins, you might want to experiment and find a happy medium that doesn't have any noticeable latency, but that allows smooth operation of the system. Once the recording is ready, you can always go back to any of the two other options. As far as processors, try to leave at least one or two of them available. A good starting point is to leave them working at an 85% capacity. If you have a complex multiprocessor, you can raise this percentage as long as you have a good number of cores available for the rest of your computing system. The disk cache function loads your entire session into RAM for playback and recording purposes, which dramatically improves the read-write access time while reducing the load on your hard drives. Don't max it out and leave at least 15% available for the rest of the operations. Here's a rule of thumb for the delay compensation engine. Fewer plugins and processes, shorter values. Denser sessions with lots of plugins, long values. That's it. Hopefully you can have a smoother running system after applying these changes. Don't forget to print out that cheat sheet and give us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done already. Visit us on the web at www.musicmastermind.tv and create your free membership and gain access to this and many more incredible videos regarding advanced recording, mixing, and music production practices happening right here inside the professional high-end studio environment. There's a lot of really cool content that you won't see anywhere else. That's it for now, but I'll see you very soon. Alex J here, over and out.